بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين حبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We live in the information age where we're constantly being bombarded with news, information, and it becomes overwhelming at times, keeping track of everything. And given the situation that we find ourselves in as an ummah globally, it can be depressing at times. It can be very difficult to deal with. And the reality is that oftentimes, more often than not, the Muslims are portrayed in a, in a negative light. Whether it be in, in news media, whether it be in Hollywood, uh, whether it be in discussions uh, at academic institutions. And, you know, Malcolm X, he had something to say very powerful and spot on to the truth. Rahimahullah ta'ala, when he said that the media is the most powerful entity on earth. Because they have the power to make the innocent guilty. And make the guilty innocent. And that's power because they control the minds of the masses. Right? He said that, you know, if you're not careful, you may be sympathizing or defending the oppressor rather than the oppressed. And we find that to be true. We find that to be true. In the coverage of Palestine and, and Israel. In the coverage of what's happening right now in Bilad al-Sham in Syria. Right? Where now the focus is on ISIS and what they're doing, but all along when Bashar has been using chemical weapons and slaughtering his own people, the world is silent, right? When it fits the narrative of this boogeyman, this bad guy that's out there and we need to continue funding the war machine, it's a nice, it's a nice cop out. And so we see the coverage of even things locally right here at home in America, right here in Baltimore, and the protests and the Black Lives Matter when when uh, we see the lives of African-American individuals being, being taken without any due justice. When a 12-year-old child can be shot and killed in a playground in, in Ohio, and the family is sent the bill for the ambulance ride to the airport. And the police officer is, gets off scotch-free. We find the coverage in, in the protests themselves. We see riots with when it's not a primarily an African-American community covered in a very different light than when it's people of color. And we find it, of course, with Muslims and how we're portrayed negatively as well. But what's unfortunate is this, and what we have to be aware of and be careful is that, brothers and sisters, you know, if in this portrayal of negativity towards Muslims, we find that in our subconscious, we ourselves view ourselves in a negative light. Perhaps you've sat in discussions or gatherings where you find people, when you see a brother with a big beard, mocking the beard, saying he's too fundamental. Yet the Messenger of Allah had a large beard. Or you see a sister with a niqab or a hijab and a jilbab and you mock her or ridicule her for being backward, for dressing in the old times when the wives of the Messenger of Allah, our mothers, Ummahat al Mu'minin, would dress covering their faces. Right? SubhanAllah, one of the sisters in, who used to live in, in Michigan, she would babysit a, a, a Christian child and a Jewish child. And she went with the children to the Christian child's, she was involved in a play at the church. She was involved in a play at the church. And the play had to do with you know, Jesus and, and Mary, peace be upon them, and the like. And so her, the Jewish child that she was babysitting was sitting in her lap, watching the play as a Christian child is involved in the play. And so when Joseph and Mary came out, you know, the angels that were acting as angels were humming. The church was pin drop silent. And Joseph and Mary come out. And when Mary, the, the person who's acting as Mary, comes out, how does she look? When you see the Christmas decorations in front of your neighbor's home, how is Mary dressed? She's wearing a hijab and she's wearing a jilbab. And so when Mary comes out, the young Jewish child in a pin-drop silent church audience yells out, cries out, and everybody hears, Oh my God, Mary's a Muslim! 
And everybody looks towards them and sees the hijabi sister holding the child as they're watching the play. Right? But we, we, now we've all of a sudden associated hijab with negativity. And it comes to a point where it becomes scary that we actually mock or ridicule some of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And the first step to destruction of a nation, brothers and sisters, no, is to hate one's own self. To be separated from one's own identity. You know, to, 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 to destroy a tree, you cut it from its roots. And to do that, what happens is, just like Malcolm X described decades ago, that the African American community is being made to hate themselves, to hate their hair, to hate their color of their skin, to hate their nose and the like. He, he talked about all of that. Right? And so we have to have, develop a strategy to understand things and how we uh, uh, interpret this information. And this, this, brothers and sisters, is not new. We have to understand that this is not new. Fir'aun, in the time of Fir'aun, to justify the oppression of the people, he needed a boogeyman. He needed to villainize someone. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in Surah Al-Ghafir? He says, وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ ذَرُونِي أَقْتُ الْمُوسَى وَالْيَدْعُ رَبَّهُ he says, Fir'aun says, let me alone that I may kill Musa and let him call upon his Lord. He says, and this is his justification, I fear that he will change your religion and he will spend, spread mischief in the land. He's the one who's murdering babies and he's saying, I fear he will spread mischief in the land. You see how they try to make the the the, the, the they, they need a boogeyman, they need a bad guy, and so Musa was made this way. And this is not new from the time of Fir'aun and the time of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, the same thing happened. And that's the crux and the focus of my talk today, is to share with you an incident from Surah Al-Baqarah, which Allah revealed, Surah number 2, verse 217. Different than what's in your program, by the way, we changed the topic a little bit. And I want to share with you, inshallah ta'ala, in the few minutes that I have, this incident that occurred. Now the Messenger of Allah وسلم, between the battle of Badr and the battle of Uhud, in the second and third year after Hijrah, there were small skirmishes that occurred between the Muslims and the non-Muslims. Now in one of such skirmishes, the Messenger of Allah sent Abdullah ibn Jahsh at the head of eight men and he gave him a letter that was sealed and he said, do not open it until you travel for two days. He told him which way to travel. He said, do not open this message until after two days of travel and then when you read it, do what's instructed. So Abdullah ibn Jahsh sets out with eight, eight other men and after two days, he opens the letter, and what does he find? The instruction. The instruction says to go to an area called Nakhla. And he says, it's between Mecca and Ta'if. And he, the Prophet told them, watch the movements of the caravans of Quraysh and collect news about us from them. And he told him, the Messenger of Allah told him in the instruction, once you open the letter, whoever does not wish to go forward with you anymore does not have to go forward and they can come back. All eight men went forward with Abdullah ibn Jahsh and they went to Nakhla and they set camp there. Now, they came across a caravan that was manned by four people. There were four bodyguards or four escorts of this caravan. And they had food and the like that they're taking back to Mecca. Now, what happened was, it was the last day of Rajab. Right? We're now in the month of Sha'ban. Rajab was a month preceding the month of Sha'ban. Now Rajab is one of the four sacred months. Right? Dhul Qa'dah, Dhul Hijjah, Muharram, and Rajab. Three in a row, 11, 12, and 1. And then Rajab, the seventh month in the Islamic calendar, are the sacred months. Now from the rules of, 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 of the culture at the time, was that no one is to shed blood or attack or wage war in the sacred months. This is an accepted policy by both Muslims and non-Muslims dating pre-Islam. Now, Abdullah Mujah sees this caravan and he discusses with his companions, what should we do? Should we attack them to, to take the food to bring back to Medina? Or should we wait for Rajab to end? Now, the predicament that they were in was this. Rajab is a sacred month in which they are not supposed to fight. The problem was is if they waited one day, they would, the caravan would reach Mecca and would, be ent would enter into the haram, the area of the haram, the sanctuary, which is also forbidden to fight. And so they had a dilemma. Should we do it or just let it go? And they decided, they made their ijtihad, they decided, let's go ahead and attack. And so they attacked. 
And one of the, 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 the bodyguards of the caravan, Amr ibn al-Hadrami, he was killed. Two were taken prisoners of war, and one fled the caravan. Now when this happened, this was breaking news in the Middle East. Right? This was on the front page of Fox News, the front page of CNN, the front page of even likes of MSNBC. Every single organization was broadcasting this as much as possible. The Muslims are terrorists. The Muslims have shed blood in a sacred month. Al Bayhaqi he reports that the message that was said that قَدْ اسْتَحَلَّ مُحَمَّدٌ وَأَصْحَابُهُ الشَّهْرَ الْحَرَامِ وَسَفَكُوا فِيهِ الدَّمْ وَأَخَذُوا فِيهِ الْأَمْوَالِ وأس وأس وَأَسَرُوا فِيهِ الرِّجَالِ He says that the people were saying that Muhammad ﷺ has made lawful and his companions have made lawful in the month of the, the sacred month to shed the blood and take the wealth and uh, take prisoners of war. And this is big, this is big time news. Right? Every, spread all across Arabia. The Muslims dare viol, vi, violate this, this, this code. The code of conduct that's been present in the, in the Arabian Peninsula. Right? Now when they got back to Medina, the Messenger of Allah told them, مَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِقِتَالٍ فِي الشَّهْرِ الْحَرَامِ I didn't tell you to kill anyone in the sacred months. He rebuked them, he criticized them. Why did you do that? And the nine men... Two of them actually after going forward, one of them lost their, cam they lost their camel, so they went back to look for it. Seven were there. The seven became very worried about themselves. They made a mistake. They realized they made a mistake. And they were very concerned. Now, this is when the verse that we will discuss today is, was revealed. The verse number 217 in Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, fi." <laughs> قُلْ قِتَالٌ فِيهِ كَبِيرٌ وَصَدٌّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَكُفْرٌ بِهِ وَالْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ وَإِخْرَاجُ أَهْلِهِ مِنْهُ أَكْبَرُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَالْفِتْنَةُ أَكْبَرُ مِنَ الْقَتْلِ وَلَا يَزَالُونَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ حَتَّى يَرُدُّوكُمْ عَنْ دِينِكُمْ إِنْ اسْتَطَاعُوا وَمَنْ يَرْتَدِدْ مِنْكُمْ عَنْ دِينِهِ فَيَمُتْ وَهُوَ كَافِرٌ فَأُولَئِكَ حَبِطَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَأُولَئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Allah says, they ask you about fighting in the sacred months. Allah says, say, قُلْ قِتَالٌ فِيهِ كَبِيرٌ Fighting in the sacred months is a great sin. It was a mistake what they did. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَصَدٌ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَكُفْرٌ بِهِ وَالْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ وَإِخْرَاجُ أَهْلِهِ مِنْهُ أَكْبَرُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ He says, but rather, He says, but a greater transgression with Allah is the fact that you prevent mankind from following the way of Allah, preventing people from following Islam. And he says, and preventing access to the Masjid al-Haram. And he says, and to drive out the inhabitants of Mecca. When Quraysh drove out the Muslims and made them go to Medina and forced them to leave Mecca. He says, all of these are greater transgressions than what the Muslims did. Then he says, And fitna is a greater trial or a greater problem than, than killing. Then he says, and they will continue to fight you. The people of Mecca will continue to fight you, O Muslims, until you turn your back on your religion. Until you leave the religion, until you do that, they will continue to fight. He says, and whoever turns back on his religion and dies as a disbeliever, for those their deeds have become worthless in this world and the hereafter, and those are the companions of the fire, they will abide therein eternally. Now, why am I sharing this with you? With you? Because we see a very important concept that we have to learn from the Quran and the, the, the sin of the Messenger of Allah, which I'll share with you in the few minutes that I have left. How do we deal with news and information that we're being bombarded with, right? We learn some principles from the Qur'an and from history. Number one, understand that the media will blow the mistakes committed by Muslims out of proportion, will twist the truth. Now, this is not all media outlets. This is not to paint them with a blanket brush of negativity. There are many amongst the journalists, journalists and, and outlets who are, which are fair. But there are also some, many, perhaps it's even fair to say most, which portray the Muslims in a negative light and blow things out of context, and so you have to keep things in, 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 in proper perspective. Right? As Allah did, they made a mistake, yes, but don't forget what you've done. 
right? When you've, you've driven out the people from their homes and driven people away from Allah and you've, you've killed and tortured and the like. Don't forget that as well. Number two, what's the, basic for, the basis for the Muslims when we re receive news about other Muslims? What is our understanding? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah An-Nur, Surah number 24, verse 12. لَوْلَا إِذْ سَمِعْتُمُوا ظَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بِأَنفُسِهِمْ خَيْرًا وَقَالُوا هَذَا إِفْكُمْ مُبِينَ And about the slander of Aisha radiallahu anha, our mother. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse saying, Why did the believers not, both the men and the women, when they heard the news of the slander, think good of their own people? And said, this is a great slander. Right, so the understanding, the basis is we initially think good of our of our brothers and sisters, unless there is proof to establish they made a mistake. Then kunu qawamina bil qisti shuhada wala ala anfusikum. And if we find there to be truth and evidence that there was transgression performed or transgression that was done, then we will stand for justice, even if it's against our own selves, let alone, let alone our families or friends. When we are the first to do that, number three. It is imperative, brothers and sisters, that we do not believe everything that we hear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah Al-Hujurat, Surah number 49, verse 6. Allah says, O oh, you who believe, if an evil or wicked person comes to you with news, then confirm that news. Because if you don't, he says, you may cause harm to someone. If you act based on the information you receive without confirming it, from a source that is not trustworthy, you may harm someone and you will then become regretful over what you did. So we have to confirm what we hear and that's very important. Number four, we have to diversify our media intake. And I got 55 seconds left. All right, we have to diversify our media intake. I remember reading a, a, a news broadcast that, you know, a drone strike in Pakistan killed six terrorists. But then you start looking into Eastern media and find out what happened. And you find out it was actually a, a, a girl's school that was bombed and six children who were in school, female children who were in school, were killed, right? So that's important. Diversify your media intake. Don't just take from Fox News or CNN or BBC. Spread your wealth around and try and gather information. Number five, critically think. It's important that we critically think, right? When we're fed something, don't just take it at face value. Read what's in between the lines. We have to become a nation that critically thinks and doesn't just take things at face value. Number six, and this is very important. The Salaf, they used to make this dua. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa rizuqna attiba'a wa arina al-baatila baatila wa rizuqna ajtinaba. Oh Allah, show us truth as truth. And oh Allah, show us falsehood as falsehood, right? And help us stay away, follow the truth and stay away from falsehood. So why is that important? Because we live in times of confusion. So we ask Allah for clarity in the times that we live in. And the last point that I mention as we close is that if you're going to speak the truth, you speak the whole truth, right? Like I said, if Muslims do something wrong, we absolutely will condemn it. If if they do something wrong, we will be the first to condemn. But at the same time, we can't forget the circumstances that caused the situation to begin with. When we talk about what's happening in Palestine and Israel, we can't forget that since 2007, there's been a blockade on the people of Gaza. When we talk about Syria, we can't forget that Bashar has been, uh, been slaughtering his people left and right. And so naturally, there'll be some people who will react out of emotion or after losing their family. But if somebody does something wrong, we will be the first to say, yes, they did something wrong. Don't misconstrue what I'm saying and say we defend the likes of ISIS or the like. No, absolutely not. If anybody kills an innocent civilian, we absolutely stand against that. And Islam is unequivocal and that no civilians are to be harmed. That's unequivocal truth. But at the same time, if we're going to speak, then let us speak the whole truth. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did, they made a mistake, but the other mistakes are also there. We, brothers and sisters, we have to develop a maturity and understanding of the information that we receive. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.